Okay, welcome everyone to today's session. Today we are going to discuss about uh, time series model selection criterion. So the objective of today's session is to understand uh, how to select a model. So the objective of today's session is the objective of today's session is discussing the flow chart approach to to understand which model of time series domain is appropriate so that we can use that model uh, for our purposes uh, So we are focusing on the approach of our studio in our uh, study. So first of all, we'll define what is time series. So time series models are models are those models where we are actually studying one entity, and then it really can be a country, an institute, or a person, and which is assessed several times over a period of time. And that assessment may be annually, quarterly, monthly or daily or any other uh, frequency so this way the, the data is from one person and he is being assessed regularly so this way this data is time series now we'll go towards uh, our uh, flow chart which we uh, you which we will uh, study to discuss the time series models so for that i will open up a uh, Website. This is a website of mindmap.com in which you can make a flowchart and and it's very easy to use. So the website is app.mindmap.com. So you can open it up and you can add many things. So I will discuss this right now and I will change it while I'm discussing so that you can see how the model is made. So first of all, when we have a data set, we check for its unit two tests. Okay, so when uh, and unit two test, we already discussed that there are several types in our studio. There are three to four types of unit two tests are available. If there is ADF test, there is Philip Parent test, there is KPSS test. So you check for unit two, and if all of your variables are stationary at I one means uh, all of the variables have a constant mean and uh, constant mean and uh, and means that it is time invariant. Then we look for uh, the, the. Then we select, look for endogeneity in the in the model. So how we check for endogeneity? This is a, we will discuss it in the R studio separately. So if all the variables are stationary at i one, we check for endogeneity. Endogeneity means that uh, if the, the there is a reverse effect means. If we are assuming that X is causing Y, and in reality Y is also causing X, so uh, so if if there is a reverse causality or if there is a two-way effect, then there is endogeneity. So let's assume that if there is no endogeneity, then we will use OLS F test to check for co-integration. Okay, so OLS F test is a suitable test to check for co-integration if all the variables are stationary and there is no endogeneity. Okay, so and and uh, if and and then we'll use the uh, if the variables if uh, the the and if there is co-integration, then the OLS model that we discussed in our studio earlier is the long run model for the variables. So it will provide us the long run estimates. And if there is no co-integration. Then we need to re revisit our model, go back and uh, find appropriate variables, see the theory that what's wrong, and then come come back and do the process again. So revisit model means we we'll reconnect the node with checking unit two test again and make it dotted. So we go back, change the variables, and do the unit two test again. And I will add a label here. Uh, let's add a little label uh, change variables. Okay, 
So this way we can we can check for the, uh, the, the, the we can revisit the model. So I will move it out so that it can be it is readable. So let's see how to do that. I will do it later on. Then if there is endogeneity, then we'll make a same model. And endogeneity uh, also means that simultan it's also called uh, simultaneity. So when we discussed OLS earlier, we, we, understood, we did the test for uh, endogeneity and simultaneity, but we will revisit it again. Okay, so if there is endogeneity or simultaneity, what we will do, we will we'll build a SEM, uh, we will build, build a SEM or a VAR model with zero lags. So it will be a SEM model for a variable where all the variables will be uh, dependent variable one by one. Suppose you have, you have two, one dependent variable and two independent variables and there is endogeneity, it means you will run three regressions, all variables will become dependent one by one. And, and and we will run them simultaneously. That will be same model and, and, and its wall test or its significance test will be the co-integration test. And if they are co-integrated, mean if the wall test is significant, what we'll do that the same VAR model will provide us the long run paths. And if the, the variables are non co-integrated, means if this model is uh, not significant, means we will revisit model and what we'll do then, we'll reconnect it the back step and we'll change the path and dot it and we'll rename it that uh, find change variables again. So that will be the solution. So we'll revisit it again. Then there is, uh, if now we'll go for the, the other side, if all the variables are non-stationary at I1, what we will do, we will check for endogeneity and that is, uh, we'll go to throw it again when there is, we have the uh, data set and we'll do it in the R studio. And if there is no no endogeneity, we will do is, we'll do that uh, angle granger integration test. And, and if there is integration, we'll use the ECM model for long run and short run. We did that ECM model previously and we will revisit it in the, our codes again. And and if there is no co-integration, we will do use the simple ARDL model for, and for S, uh, for short run. Means if there is no co-integration, means there is no long run. Then simple ARDL model will be used for estimation of short run. But if there is no co-integration and that then short run model is also insignificant, then, then we will revisit model and we will select it and go back to unit of test and I will change its design and it will seem, it will say it has the same purpose that we will change the variables so that um, the unit to test will be done again with new set of variables. If there is endogeneity, we will do the Johansson Gisilius co-integration test. We'll do that in our next session. And if there are there is co-integration, then the vector error correction model will be providing us long run and short run estimates. Okay. And if, if there is no co-integration, we'll use the VAR model vector autoregressive model for short run estimates. And if there is, and, and if the VAR is insignificant, we will revisit the model and let's connect it with the unit root again and change its design. So it is our uh, to revisit the variables. So this way, uh, the, the joints in Gisilius uh, model will be select, uh, tested then if there's a mixed order of variables mean few variables are non-stationary and few are stationary, we'll go for the endogeneity test. And if there is no endogeneity, we will use the F-bound F test of uh, Pissarin, which is commonly used by the people. And if the bound test is co-integrated, we'll use the ARDL bounds, uh, long run and short run model. If there's no co-integration, we'll use the simple ARDL for short run. Now here the question is, uh, how, uh, what, why should we go for short run? Sometimes the variables you select are not related in long run anyways. So no matter wh what lag order you choose, they will not work in long run. They are, they will be insignificant in long run, but they are affecting each other in short run. So this way you can check for short run effects. And if there are short, uh, also insignificant in short run, we will revisit the model and revisit model means we go back to 
you know, do test and I will make it dotted line again. Okay, this way you go back to select the uh, unit to test with the appropriate variables. And if there is endogeneity in the mixed order variables, this domain is actually unexplored. So I have up till now, I have not seen any, any simultaneous equation or vector model, which is suitable for mixed order variables. Uh, there, there is a documentation by Johansson GCDS for mixed order variables, but there is no library that I've seen that can accommodate the mixed order variable in, the, in a Johansson GCDS setup. So what I can do is we can, I can suggest is that if this happens, so what we'll do is then try to make all variables I zero or I one. Try to make all variables I zero and second option can be try to make all variables I I one. So when you have all variables I zero, what you will do is you can just uh, connect with this uh, uh, all, all our stationary uh, yes so you can stack, connect with this process means all the variables are, are now i0 if they are stationary at i1 means they are i0 okay so you can go here and then do this process and if you are able to make them all variables i1 then you can move it to this step and then to, to see for the the remaining process here so this way you can go out of this process or or, or you can add another option uh, remove the endogenous variable so if you are able to remove the endogenous variable let me move it into second point uh, the, so if you're move, able to move the endogenous variable, so what you can do is you can connect it with the ARDL bound process. This way uh, you can, because there is no endogeneity now, this way you can use the ARDL bound process. Okay. And this is a way you can uh, handle your variables if there is a unit to test, but there's another, another side of it you also need to check if there is a constant variance. So constant variance model is used when this unit to test is used when you already know your with the, the frequency of data is long or, or the frequency is high. So usually variance ratio test is not used when the variables are in annual data or even by uh, by annual. If the data is monthly uh, or quarterly or daily, and, and it's very long, then we check for variance ratio test. And if the and in the variance ratio test, if a dependent variable is non-stationary, if the dependent, so uh, dependent variable non-stationary means that its variance is not constant, it's changing in time. So we'll check for endogeneity or simultaneity. If there is no endogeneity, let's enable it here, no. And, and if there is yes, So let, let it be readable. So if there is no endogeneity, we will use the arch and garch models. And if there is endogeneity or simultaneity, we will go for vector arch garch models. And if the variables, uh, if the dependent variable has a, uh, is not changing in uh, the variance is constant, means it is uh, not changing in uh, time. If the, uh, the dependent variables has a constant variance, then we move towards mean unit to test. Okay, and then let, let us add another option here, that is that a child model. If uh, any independent variable has a non-constant variance, while dependent is, uh, let's complete it while dependent variable have constant variance. 
So what you will do is it means that that independent variable will lead to heterosky elasticity. So what we will do is we will uh, insert a sibling. We will use insert a child. We will use the we will take natural log to that variable so that it it becomes uh, its variance becomes smaller and and that problem may be solved and then connect it to do the unit two tests so this way you can uh, handle this problem too so this is the flow chart that we discussed in our today's session uh, this way you are able to see how the models are selected in the time series domain but this doesn't mean that your your problem is over when you make such model and then you have to clear other diagnostics so other diagnostics include uh, multicollinearity for that we already discussed there are few ways to handle it out the well, the best the few popular ways that we can discuss is let's write it out here so for multicollinearity we can do is uh, let's we can we can go for cross products natural log or or changing variables variable or variable structure okay so this way you can select the model if you have the uh, multi community in the uh, results if there is uh, any other problem for hetero it is heteroscopicity you can go for so the taking natural log of the variables so that it can be handled for non normality there are two option they normalize them okay using z score or natural log it depends what what thing you need second is if they it's not it's uh, not it, you already know what's the nature you can also go for poison process or any other distribution if you already know what distribution is uh is distribution is used okay then if uh, and for other for non uh, stability if there is the very model is not stable there is a structural break you can create a structural break break dummy and 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 use it as exogenous uh variable so that that the break can be handled and uh, let let's see these are the basic problem that can occur and the the problem uh, on the time series model and the, the major problem that we discussed is is in the the process that i shown here so this was the session of selection of time series time series model hopefully you understood how to select a time series model thank you very much